Hello everybody, how are you? I hope you're fine. So today we continue our short teachings about Buddhist philosophy and meditation. So now today we are speaking about uh, consciousness because we saw in the few uh, past videos uh, what we call the five aggregates, the five like composites of what we call a person. So today we are at the last, consciousness. So what means consciousness here? You know, that's just what uh, perceive or experiment or know reality and things, you know. So there's different ways of knowing things. So actually when we describe consciousness in Buddhist philosophy, we speak about six types of consciousnesses. There are two, ca two categories between this in to these six. There's external one and internal one. External one are five consciousnesses. That's uh, related to what we speak about when we say five senses. You know, like sight, touch, tasting, smelling, hearing. Actually, it's a little bit different from what we used to learn. You know, like we learned that the eye is seeing, the ear is seeing, the nose is smelling, like this, here is hearing like this. So we say this in Buddhist philosophy to be uh, mindful or to be conscious or aware of something we need three things. We need consciousness that is immaterial and we need the object and we need the basis of this consciousness. So for example for the eye consciousness to be produced we need this eye. We need example a color like blue color and we need this consciousness. Example, just the eye. If I, without consciousness, could perceive, we could have like a simple eye, for example, uh, somebody who just passed away, and his eye could perceive. But actually, what we say in Buddhist philosophy, we need I as a basis for consciousness. We need an object to perceive, but we need also consciousness. So. Uh, as long as we are living, we are, can produce these consciousnesses like seeing, touching, smelling, uh, hearing, uh, tasting, like this. We can, these five external consciousnesses that are aware of the external world. But the basis, basis of these five consciousnesses, and also that is the, maybe the most important one, also because this is the basis of others, is the internal consciousness. Internal consciousness, there are many levels. For example, coarser level of internal consciousness would be like, uh, you know, conceptual thoughts, you know, when we are thinking about tomorrow's plan, yesterday, you know, what we, what we did, what we should do today, all these kind of thoughts happening in our mind, this is internal consciousness, you know, sometimes we are not with somebody, but we think about this person, so we don't look at this person, we don't hear this person, but still, this person's aspects appears to the mind. Or, at the subtle level, maybe we could speak about the dream state. When we dream about something, we clearly see something in our dream. We can even clearly taste something in our dream, for example but we are not actually seeing or tasting these things. We are just, you know, like our internal consciousness, like thinking or imag imagining these things. So there are many levels like that, from the coarser to the subtlest. So subtlest state of mind we call clear light mind. So from Buddhist point of view, this clear light mind, you know, um, is like a continuum, you know, this moment of consciousness gives birth to next moment of consciousness. For example, I'm aware right now, this is just the continuity of uh, the preceding moment consciousness. I can go back, uh, you know, from this point to this morning. I can go back to yesterday. I can go back to uh, past week, past month, past year, until, you know, beginning of my life. So from Buddhist point of view, before this life, also, my consciousness was there. So we say that's without beginning, also without end. So this consciousness, we say in Buddhist philosophy, it is 
uh, all, as Buddha says, nature of mind is pure and luminous. Impurities are temporary. We saw the past week, you know, when we spoke about the compositional factors, there are some kind of mental afflictions or negative emotions. This, what we call impurities. Mind is by nature clear and luminous, but these impurities are temporary. So, we can all achieve a state where we are completely free from all these impurities if we work to improve our mind through meditation. So that's why meditation is so much important. And by the power of meditation, we can develop these qualities into us. So as we like kind of clean the mind from all impurities and negative thoughts and emotions, that's the meaning of meditation in Buddhist philosophy. So later we will speak more about the meaning of meditation, what it means. Chanju sem jo rimboje, ma ke banam ke yuje, ke banyam banyam banyam, konen kondun pe wan shu. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> See you next time.